Well, welcome to our midweek devotion. Uh, I'm Pastor Mark Gomes at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Royal. Uh, and along with our producer, Mark Jenks, we welcome you to another midweek devotion. Uh, and we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we pray the prayer our Lord taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We repeat the words of our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Well, today is uh, midweek in Royal. Um, actually, we're recording on a Wednesday, and uh, yesterday we had an explosion at our Royal Elevator, um, as sometimes that can happen in elevators for a lot of reasons, and now, uh, after the great work of the emergency crews, uh, they're trying to put the last hot spots out and talk about what the repair is going to be and all that. When the explosion happened yesterday, everybody's got a story of where they were and what they were doing and what it sounded like. Uh, and some might have described it as their idea of opening the door of hell, I suppose. And that's my transition into our topic this week. Last week we talked about heaven, and I promise you we'd also talk about the biblical concept of hell this week. And so let's take a moment and talk about that. You might remember that I mentioned in the Old Testament, or the Hebrew Scriptures better called, uh, there really wasn't any heaven and hell. All people, no matter how bad or how righteous they lived their lives, whether they believed in God or didn't follow God, everybody went to the same place called Sheol in the mind of the Old Testament writers. A place of shadows where the dead just sort of hang out forever. That's why people valued life on earth really, and nothing else, and why they valued families to carry your name down into the future. Your family was your eternal life. As time went on, God began to reveal more and more that there is not only a life after death, which the Old Testament believed in, but much more than just a common place where everybody goes and simply exists. Uh, that when uh, you follow God and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, your promised life with God forever in the wonderful reward of heaven. Uh, not reward because we earn it, but because it comes as a gift from God, which we don't deserve, through faith. The opposite is also true. Those people who consciously reject God and don't want him as part of their life, uh, or just don't care, uh, they are given a chance to care and to believe up until the end of their life, but after a physical body dies, we do not live with God. We live apart from God forever. That's not a place where we want to be. Um, and the Bible talks about that place in terms of um, familiar sights and experiences of the people of the time. 
Uh, in the Bible, uh, the word hell comes from a Germanic root meaning concealed place or underworld uh, for Sheol. Uh, it uh, translates also the Greek word Gehenna and Hades in the New Testament. Gehenna carried more the notion of punishment, Hades simply as the fate of those who die. But either way, hell was uh, compared to the Valley of Hinnom outside Jerusalem. Uh, what the New Testament writers and what Jesus himself wanted to do was to say that, look, life apart from God is like being cast away, like being away from something that's most joyous in your life. Uh, it's a refusal to, to want the joy of God in your life, and so you feel like a castaway living apart from him. It is like a place where we cast away people, like Gehenna, which was a cursed place in the Old Testament where even child sacrifice took place just outside of Jerusalem. And later on, that place of Gehenna uh, was used as the municipal dump by Jesus' time. Uh, and so Jesus was saying, really quite literally, that living apart from God is like being thrown away into the dump. And, you know, I remember when I was a kid and uh, my brother and I loved to go in my grandpa's truck, loved to have that truck too, an old uh, black pickup Ford from the 50s, but anyway, I digress. Uh, we used to love to go out to the dump and um, uh, while my grandpa was unloading stuff from his truck into one of the piles at the dump, we'd wander around and just look at stuff because it was interesting to young boys. And it also had that unforgettable dump smell, which uh, any of you of a certain age and older will remember very well. It was always kind of an adventure. Well, smoke was always coming up from the dump. Uh, because you could burn piles of trash that you left back in those days. The environmental rules were uh, almost non-existent, actually, at that time in the 1950s when I was growing up. Uh, and uh, Jesus says that this smoky place, this municipal dump outside of Jerusalem, is what it's like when you're cast away from God. And better to be with God and enjoy the feast of eternal joy than to be in the other place. That later, that idea that Jesus and the rest of the New Testament used was translated into kind of a kingdom of fire filled with devils. Certainly Satan is present in hell because Revelation says he's condemned there. But a lot of that language is kind of medieval and picturesque like Revelation is. And so I wouldn't get too detailed about those uh, medieval pictures of hell, uh, the devils and the demons and the fires of hell and people sitting in the lake of fire. There's some sense of that in the Bible, but mainly it's meant to drive home to you that it is not fun to be apart from God. It is a joy to be living with God, both in this life and in the life to come. So in Jesus' day, Hades could have any one of three meanings, uh, or hell, for example. It could be just death, it could be the place of death, or the place of the wicked death. And that's the kind of hell that we're talking about today, as opposed to heaven. There are a lot of questions about hell. Modern people reject the idea of hell and say that a loving God would not uh, allow, let alone send people, to a place of eternal punishment just because they didn't believe in them. Uh, other people feel that that's just an outmoded uh, idea. Uh, in the Lutheran Church, and I think in most of the Christian churches, we're not willing to say that, that God is only a happy face God uh, and that anything negative doesn't come from God. Um, actually, we choose our own hell, both in this life and in the life to come. I like, and I'll close with this, I like what one... Um, uh, monk told me that I knew, a uh, Roman Catholic monk, uh, he and I were discussing the idea of hell one day, and he said, you know, I, I'm convinced that uh, Jesus would reach down to the lowest depths of hell to pluck me out and take me to heaven to be with him. He said, what I'm worried about is that I wouldn't want him to. 
sometimes we prefer separation from God through our own rebelliousness, through our own evil. Uh, and God came to die on the cross to show us that there's a better way to be. And that way is the life of faith. It's the way that leads to eternal salvation. And your hope can just focus on that while we talk about all the other questions of what it means to live without God after death. So I hope these facts were helpful to you as I close with this prayer. O oh God, our beginning and our end, you promise us eternal life in Christ for all who believe. Help us to keep that faith strong in our hearts so that not only now, but also at the hour of our death, we will live with you, not apart from you, in the joyous banquet with all those who have believed. We pray this in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week.